So we need to start step one of checking for these uncashed checks. The money that may be owed to you that you didn't even realize. I'll drop a link to this website below. This is logging into my account with CRA, the Government of Canada, for individuals. You can see a bit of information here about CERB, but if we scroll down, you've got three different options for how you can register for the service. If you're already using online banking, um, you can actually, in a lot of cases, as long as you're dealing with these specific institutions, just use your online banking to link up to log into MyCRA. So you won't have to remember a new username or password. Some people really like this option for the simplicity of it. Others um, who are thinking they might be transitioning banks in the future don't really want to go through the hassle of trying to unlink that and get access again. Your other option is that you can just create a username and password by registering directly with the CRA. Or if you're in British Columbia, you can use your BC Services card to log in. If you were to register using one of the sign-in partners, you're going to click here. It's going to take a moment. I'm on rural internet, so it takes a little extra moment. And then you select your sign-in partner here. Now you can read the terms and conditions and privacy notice. Go ahead and follow on through with the steps. Um, that's not the process that I'm going to go through right now. Um, but from there, it's pretty straightforward. Just log in like you would to your online banking. At one point, it's going to ask you to do that, and you will need to do that. Now, signing in by registering with the CRA, what do you need to do that? Well, there's four pieces of information you're going to need. So if you don't have all those four pieces of information, don't even start this registration process because it's not like you can save it partway through. So if we're looking at what we need to register, you're going to need your social insurance number, um, sometimes known as the SIN number. You're going to need your last filed tax return. So right now that should probably be 2019. If you don't have whatever number it's going to ask you for from that tax return, you're not going to be able to move forward. Now, here's a little tip. If you don't have a copy of that tax return handy, but you've received your notice of assessment, often the line number that you need to put in on the, um, to confirm your identity is also on your notice of assessment. So you could use that to get the information you need to move forward. You need your postal code. And remember, it has to be the postal code that's registered with the CRA. So if you changed your address since you last filed your taxes, have you notified the CRA that you moved? Probably not. So use the postal code that was used when you last filed your taxes. You'll have an option through the registration process to get the um, confirmation number in another way and they'll double check that your postal code is still the same. So you'll have an option later to make sure that the confirmation number goes to the new address. But for now, you need to use your old address to move forward. And then, of course, you're going to need your birthday, which I'm pretty sure you know. Um, I have seen a few cases where an individual's birthday with the government is different than the birthday that they celebrate with their parents. Um, I've seen this happen sometimes with immigrants. So if it's the case where you have two different dates for your birthday, go with the one that's on your documentation when you file your taxes. Okay, so that's what you need to register there. So you would go through the steps here, entering your social insurance number and all of the other information that they've asked for. And it's also going to ask you to create a username and a password. Your username has to be eight characters, and the password cannot contain special characters. So if you're trying to use a hashtag or an at symbol or you know an ampersand or anything like that, don't. 
because um, it's going to air it on you. And as you're working through with the CRA website, I highly recommend that you don't use the back button. It can break systems. It didn't in that case, but there are a lot of areas of the CRA website where you're working that that doesn't work. The BC services card, I'm pretty sure you guys know what you're doing with this. Just go ahead and click here and follow the prompts. Hopefully that helps you get registered with the CRA. Now, as soon as you create your username and password and you go through the process of agreeing to the, the different statements that come up, it's going to bring you directly into a My CRA. You will not be able to find the uncashed checks link yet. Once that code gets mailed to you, which typically happens within 10 days, we're in COVID times right now and mail is going crazy. So you might see some delays in getting mail. Once you get that code and you log in and enter that code, then you will have full access to the website. And that's at the point where you can scroll down and see if you have uncashed checks or not. Because in the next video, we're going to show you how to search for uncashed checks. And then the video after that, we're going to show you if you have uncashed checks showing, how exactly do you go through the process of getting those checks reissued to you? Okay, I hope you have a great day and keep your eyes on the mail.